Welcome to Bald Guy DIY. In this video, I'm going to tell you all about how breakers work and how they're used in your home to protect the electrical circuits and keep everything safe. So circuit breakers are used in your home to protect the electrical circuits that power everything from receptacles, lights, refrigerators, all sorts of other appliances, your furnace, all those kinds of things. They're not very creatively named because circuit breakers simply break the circuit or open it when too much current is flowing. They're considered an overcurrent device because it's only when there's too much load on a circuit, too much current flowing, that they actually trip. Breakers are rated at many different amperage settings from 15 amps, which is typically the lowest in your home, up to 30, 40, 50, 60, and usually no more than 100 amps for the main circuit breaker for the panel in your home. One of the common misconceptions with breakers is that they're used to protect the thing that you have plugged into the circuit. You know, for example, protect the lamp that you have plugged in or your vacuum cleaner or those kinds of things. But circuit breakers were not created to protect your appliances or gadgets or electronics. Breakers are there in order to protect the circuits themselves. When electricity flows through a wire, there is resistance in the wire and that causes some heat to be released. The more current that flows through the same wire, the warmer it gets. And if there's too much current flowing, it could melt the insulation and eventually cause a fire. What circuit breakers do is stop it at an acceptable level of current flow so that the circuit won't overheat, the wires won't melt, and there won't be the opportunity for sparks or excess heat to cause a fire or other malfunction. One of the other misconceptions about breakers is that they trip at the number that's printed on the breaker. For example, if you have a 15 amp breaker and you have 15 amps flowing through it, the common misconception is it will trip at that level. What really happens is as you exceed the rating of the breaker, it begins to sense an increase in temperature from the current flowing through and after a period of time when enough temperature change has happened, it's going to trip. So if you were to go just above the rating of the breaker, it might take several minutes, maybe even 20, 30 minutes or an hour before it would trip at that level. But as you go increasingly higher, you know, several amps above the rating of the breaker, the basic rule of thumb is the greater the amount of current above the threshold of the breaker, the faster it's going to trip. There are two ways that a breaker works in order to provide overcurrent protection. The first one is thermally. Now, as you can see from this little video clip, there is a little bimetal strip inside, which as it heats up above the rating of the breaker, it bends away until it triggers the mechanism and causes the breaker to trip. Now, the bimetal strip is simply that. It's a strip made of two different metals bonded together, and because the two different metals expand at different rates, it causes the strip to bend when it's heated up. Now, these bimetal strips are used in many different devices for thermal protection because the bending of those two metals works really well as a triggering mechanism. Again, because it's heat sensitive, the higher above the rating of the breaker that it is, the faster that it's going to bend and the faster that it's going to trip the mechanism. Of course, depending on the rating of the breaker, there's going to be different combinations of the metals and in order to tune them specifically to the rating that's required. You might use different metals, different amounts of the metals, or simply arrange them in a way that causes them to bend more or less. This is gonna vary from manufacturer to manufacturer because they really have the creative freedom as long as their device is going to be reliable for the rating that it's been manufactured for. The thermal component of the breaker protection is there to prevent against too much load being put on that circuit and too much current flowing. But that's current that is being used to power something. The second way that a breaker protects is through a magnetic protection. The magnetic function of the breaker is there to protect against a short circuit condition where a very large amount of current flows. You want that breaker to trip right away because the heat produced is enough to cause damage to a circuit in a very short period of time. As you can see from the video, when a short circuit current is applied, the breaker reacts very differently. It's not just going to bend a bimetal strip, 
but it's actually going to use a magnetic force that's generated from that current flow in order to cause the mechanism to trip and the breaker to open the circuit. In this way, it acts like an electromagnet, the current creating a magnet which pulls the trip mechanism and causes the breaker to open the circuit. This needs to happen very fast, and as you can see from the video, it happens in just a fraction of a second. If you've had a breaker trip, or trip more than once in a short period of time, you might find that it won't reset properly until it has time to cool. That's because it takes time for the bimetal strip to straighten back out again so that it can again be resettable. Wait a little bit of time and it'll be good to go again. Now, does it hurt a breaker when it trips? Of course, these are mechanical components, so you would expect a little bit of wear there, but more importantly, it depends how that it trips. If it's to trip because of a slight overload, then that bimetal strip is gonna be reacting quite slowly, and by the time it trips, it won't have created much of a force on any of the components. However, if you have a short circuit condition, as you can see in the video, there's an arc that's created between the components as the breaker opens the circuit. That arcing is actually going to wear the metal and pit it and so that the connection when you reset it might not be as good and solid as it was before. If you have multiple short circuit conditions and more and more pitting on those contacts, the surface area when they close is going to be greatly reduced and over time it's going to heat up more than you would expect causing the breaker to nuisance trip and possibly need to be replaced. So moral of the story is don't cause short circuits with your breakers and if possible, make sure that they're running below their rated capacity. The general principle of the electrical code, especially in Canada, is that you never want to be exceeding the breaker's capacity by more than 80% for a regular continuous load. But if you're drawing the rated current of the breaker continually, that's going to cause it to have extra wear and tear and more likely that the breaker would need to be replaced sooner. Breakers come in all different shapes and sizes and it really depends on the manufacturer and type. So when you're looking to replace a breaker, it's very important that you stick with the same manufacturer and even within the same manufacturer, the same part number. The part number is important because it determines what the form factor of the breaker is. If you were to change to a different type within the same manufacturer, you might find that it requires a bolt-on application instead of the press fit, or you might find that the breaker just simply doesn't fit the space. If you have a breaker that's not fitting properly and you jam it in there and wedge it and make it work in the meantime, it's not going to last and it could create a lot of excess heat, which could create a fire or damage to the components inside. So that's basically all you need to know to understand how breakers work in your home. Did I leave something out? Leave me a comment below and let me know if you have further questions or give me a suggestion for something you'd like to see down the road. If you aren't an electrician, poking around in your electrical panel is generally not a good idea. I would highly recommend a certified electrician in order to make sure your component replacement or upgrade is handled properly and according to all relevant codes. Until next time, please like and subscribe, tell your friends and family about it, and follow me on Twitter. I release a new video every week, so sure, be sure to check back regularly. In all your DIY projects and your thirst for knowledge, don't be afraid to be balder.